The passage of scripture today is going to be Luke chapter 22, and so if you would look at that with me, I'll begin reading from verse 47. This is after the Garden of Gethsemane. This is in the last hours of Jesus before he is, actually when he is arrested. That's where we're picking up the story in Luke chapter 22, verse 47. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up. And the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. And he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? And when Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. And then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you've come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. And then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest, and Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them, and a servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. And she looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Girl, I don't know him, he said. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. And about an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. And at daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. And Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. And they all asked, Are you the Son of God? And he replied, You are right in saying I am. And then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We've heard it from his own lips. May God bless us as we have read his word. One of the courses in my formal education that was probably the most helpful and healing to me was a course that I took on change and conflict management that was taught by a man named Norman Shabchuk. And he introduced us to five different animals that are metaphors of how we can handle hostility. And those five animals are the turtle, 
the teddy bear, the owl, the fox, and the shark. And he taught us that rather than just responding to conflict with what came naturally, maybe we're naturally like a turtle, that we can follow our Lord and we can instead choose the kind of response we have to conflict based on the kind of conflict that we're facing. And so we're going to look here at the arrest of Jesus, this explosive scene, this place that's in the scripture that's full of all kinds of conflict. And we're going to look at Jesus and how he responded to conflict and how he changed the style that he used. And I think that this will be very instructive for us. There is a time to hide from conflict like a turtle. That's the first way that is a healthy way to approach some conflict situations, to hide from it like a turtle. And that's really what Jesus does as he was pulled in. And he was, as verse 54 says, Then they seized Jesus, they led him away, and they took him into the house of the high priest. Now Jesus could have struck back like a snake as they seized him, but he didn't. He pulled in. He allowed them to carry him off. His response and his tactics were the tactics of a turtle. You know, every one of us are falsely accused at times, and our response oftentimes is to want to strike back. But Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3, gives us a greater wisdom. It's a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. You see, there's times when We need to avoid strife. We need to avoid the conflict. We need to pull in like a turtle. If our mom and dad are arguing when we're a young person, it's wise not to jump in the middle of the conflict, but to pull in and take the tactics of a turtle. If a sister-in-law and a brother are arguing over finances, we're probably not not the right person to go in as a counselor. They probably need somebody else. It'd be better for us to be like a turtle as it relates to that conflict. And in fact, in Luke chapter 12, two brothers were quarreling over an inheritance. And they came to Jesus and they wanted him to solve their conflict. But Jesus undoubtedly knew Proverbs 26, verse 17, like one who grabs a stray dog by the ears, is someone who rushes into a quarrel, not their own. I've done that. I've rushed into a quarrel. I've taken sides, and my hands are all bitten. Jesus doesn't just try to solve this conflict between two brothers. He says so wisely, Who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? You see, sometimes it's better to avoid the conflict, avoid being identified with either side, leave the responsibility to someone else who might be in authority to solve the conflict. That's the tactics of a turtle. But there's a danger in the tactics of a turtle. And the danger is that we can use this tactic too much. And in fact, it's so interesting to watch Peter that he wasn't a turtle when he s- struck that man with the, who, the, the servant of the high priest here. Another gospel tells us it was Peter who drew the sword. It was Peter who struck, the, struck him. It was Peter that Jesus had to say, stop this, that Jesus had to say this to was Peter. And so he knew how to be strong, but he had pulled in and now he goes in like a turtle, Peter does. But instead of changing his response to a conflict situation, Peter stays with the turtle tactic. But let's go on and see that there is a time to indeed 
be like a turtle, but there's also a time to confront like a shark. As we read in Luke 22, we see that Peter comes into the courtyard like a turtle. He sat down, and all of a sudden, this servant girl looks at him and says, This man was with him. Now, Peter says, I don't know him. Denies our Lord three times. And what I want to suggest to you is, is that Peter needed to change his tactic. He needed to be willing to tell the truth about his relationship with Christ, even if it was a result, even if it was to result with his own blood in the water. He needed to choose to be more like a shark. There are times when we have to tell the truth, confront the situation, be honest, straightforward, and take the consequences that come. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 through 36, Jesus says, Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. You see, Jesus is warning that if we're going to follow him, there are times when we'll have to say, are you really a follower of Christ? And we'll have to tell the truth, like a shark perhaps, and take the consequences that come. There was an episode where our daughter was at work and she's a singer-songwriter and she has an album and she had given it to a friend at work. And one of the friends at work said, you know, I really like your album, but the album cover looks like this might be a Christian album and kind of she looked down on those kinds of albums. And our daughter's album is from a Christian worldview, but it's not always a blatant Christian song. And so... um, At that moment, what was she going to say? Well, she said, I am a Christian. And that's maybe why you sense in the songs and why you see on the album cover some kind of a hint of that. So she was truthful. She acknowledged her Lord, even if it meant at that moment the end of her relationship with that person. You see, sometimes being truthful will be more like a shark And there will be blood in the water. And hopefully, like this shark, we can be a smiling shark. We can be pleasant about it. We don't have to be mean, even as we tell the truth. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Norman Shabchuk says that a unique characteristic of the church and Christians is that as the world's greatest agent for peace, sometimes our message produces conflict. And when a church or when a Christian is in their very best terms of faithful living, it's often then that the conflicts can be the greatest. And so if we see somebody lying to us, we have to confront like a shark and bring out the truth and not just be a turtle and let lies remain. There are times when we have to take the tactics of the shark and confront. Now there's a warning again here. And the warning is is that If all the time our tactic is to, well, I'm just truthful, I'm just straightforward. If we're that way all the time, the problem is is that sometimes we're doing that not for our Lord, but we're really doing it for ourselves. And if we're always a shark and we're always utterly truthful, no matter what the feelings of others might be, sometimes uh, people think that we're pretty dangerous. And they might be right in 
staying away. So we have to be careful. Is it time to be like a turtle? Or is it time to be like a shark? 